Hello, everyone. Today, we are with Eric Kaufman, the CEO of Lead Docket and the Chief Operating Officer of the Colombo Law Firm, who has five lawyers across two states. Eric has an unbelievable story. I met Eric at the National Trial Lawyer Summit in Miami and was really captivated by his story, you know, starting at, I believe, West Virginia University um, on the software team, you know, that's where he gained a lot of his technological knowledge and skills. And when he joined the Colombo law firm, he actually ended up building a robust intake system for Colombo law, which now has become named lead docket. And today we're going to be going through all of the step-by-step -step ways that you can build an intake system into your law firm, really not step-by-step, -step, just how can you solve this problem? of intake in your law firm. So this is going to be an exciting one-on-one -on -one with Eric, who is a genius on intake process. So I will let Eric take the reins. All right. I'll go ahead and share my screen. Yep. So Eric's going to share his screen to bring you through a presentation on the law firm intake process, as he All says right. it. Yeah. So as Bill said, uh, you know, some years ago, we were handling new client intake like a lot of firms do, which is sheets of paper. And so we, we were managing these leads and doing a pretty pretty poor job at follow-up because our, our sheets of paper would just pile up on the lawyer's desks. And a few years later, we got, we got really sophisticated and made our sheets pink. So we thought they would stand out more among all the other papers on the, on the desks of the lawyers. Uh, but what ended up happening, obviously, is we were losing cases, right? We were trying to manage leads on sheets of paper but the reality is, you know, leads need to be communicated with the way they want to be communicated with, via text, via email, multiple follow-ups, because anyone that's ever been through the process of buying a car, you don't walk in and make that decision and make the purchase immediately. And the same happens for legal services, right? It takes multiple follow-ups, and, and that's why uh, other, other industries do this. And so because we didn't have any real information on what was working, because we weren't tracking it any other than a sheet of paper, we made our marketing decisions by sitting down with a glass of wine and <laughs> making our best guess on what was working, right? So we're doing television, billboards, uh, internet advertising, all, all the different things that, that a law firm do, but didn't really have any solid way to know what was happening. Um, as you can imagine, that isn't, isn't the best way to work. And so the lawyers would, they would do their follow-up by writing sticky notes out and kind of talk through uh, trying to remember, okay, this is a good lead. I want to follow up with them, but it was there was nothing consistent, right? So there there was no way to keep track of what leads you needed to call back and, and remember to call people multiple times. Um, and probably most law firms have the same problem that the lawyers get a tremendous number of emails, and so if the lead is buried in in the middle of their mailbox, the chances that they're going to do a follow up is pretty low. Um, you know, I find that. Of course, if it's a, a traumatic, serious, serious injury case, I mean, there. Of course, you're going to do good follow up on that. So, lawyers always say, "Well, I get everything I want." Well, I mean, they get a super significant case that they won't really want to follow up on. But where they're losing the money is in the margins, right? It's it's the smaller cases, the average run of the mill cases that if they call and they don't get an answer, they say, "Well, I didn't want that case." You, you did want it. You just, you just didn't do enough follow up to assign the client. So, what other industries do? You think about a car dealership, and, and I always use the car dealership analogy because I think a lot of people have been through this, that they, they go to the dealership and they talk to a salesman, and, and the salesman continues to call them and email them and text them until they either make a decision to buy a car or tell the dealership to leave them alone. But the guy that is doing that, the dealership that's calling you and texting you, the guy's not a genius, right? He, he's using dealership CRM software that's telling him who to call and when to call and and what to say uh, for the best chance of conversion. But you know, if you think back, a car dealership, they might make $500 on the sale of a car, and they're doing that level of sophistication. And so just think about other things that you do. Uh, if you go to a doctor's office, they're sending you text reminders to remind you of your appointment. And if you go, uh, and I was telling Bill about this earlier, I have my daughter has a golden retriever, which I guess means I have a golden retriever. And so we take it in to get groomed every few weeks and they send me reminders to let me know when I, we need to show up. That's a $45 service, right? And these guys are doing 
uh, automated communication. And, and so let's let's just take a look at a, a graph here. So the average client value for a dog groomer, uh, a dentist, a car dealership, and what is the average client value for your legal services, right? So, you know, in a, in a defense practice, you know, it could be hundreds of dollars or maybe a few thousand dollars. In a personal injury practice, it could be seven figures. Um, and so, as you can imagine, it, it makes a lot of sense to use these modern communication practices and, and lead follow-up because the potential revenue is just tremendous. And I have a quick, uh, I have a quick yeah. point on this. I just had an insight as you were talking. The funny thing here is when you look at this graph, this, this kind of hits, this really hits home to, to why you had to solve this problem to scratch your own itch uh, within the Colombo law firm is because, you know, you noticed, you knew deep down, well, you know, with, with all of these day-to-day -day services we do, dog groomers, dentists, et cetera, these people are doing follow-up. Here's why, is because their transaction value is so low, they can't miss any individual client so the true. funny thing is lawyers have gotten away with this because yeah, if true. they miss one hey i mean this is 14 to you know probably a hundred times higher value average case and it's a high margin industry so it's very fascinating to see this when you think psychologically why are dog groomers being more persistent with follow-up than lawyers interesting yeah well, and, and like you said, I mean, when I first got into this and understood that we were spending, you know, six and seven figures on advertising and really didn't have any consistent process, it was, I mean, I'm a data, I'm a data person, so it hurts. Yeah. <laughs> it hurts. Yeah. And, and most so, law firms, most law firms aren't fortunate enough to have a data person have their blood boil over stuff, stuff like this, right? That's uh, true. So, that's so true. you know, Columbo Law really yeah. lucked out. <laughs> and and I, so I think... At first, uh, when I first got into this, I thought it was just us, right? I thought that all the other law firms had this figured out and it was really just us. So, you know, I tried to find software to help and I, I tried all these other things and I, I realized that uh, there was really nothing out there that did what I wanted. And we'll talk about that a little bit later, but, but how we actually got to this point, how we ended up making a tool to solve this for our business was just, I, I saw the bleeding. And I saw what we were doing wrong and I knew we needed a better way to do it. You know, and the hard part of this is a lot of the, they call it client relationship management tools that exist, you know, the sales force of the world and fusion soft, those sort of things, they're designed to sell everything, right? They're designed to, for some guy selling t-shirts and another real estate agent. And so they're, they're vastly more complicated than you need for a legal service uh, because they're designed to do everything. I would say that it's, it's kind of like uh, Microsoft Word versus Google Docs, right? Word does a million things that people use 5% of. And so just to do the most basic thing is, I think, pretty difficult in Word. It's because it's designed to do everything for everybody. So anyway, let's, let's kind of move on a little bit and talk about one of the areas that I think where law firms miss a lot of cases is what I call the chase, right? Mm. The chase process is about doing follow-up with your leads, follow-up with everybody else. And, and the problem is if you don't do the proper follow-up, your leads float away. That's, that's kind of the analogy with the, with the uh, balloons. Mm. So you want to do follow-up with your email inquiries, your telephone inquiries, your web chats. And if someone doesn't set an appointment with you to make sure you do follow-up, because people will say, you know, I'm interested, but I want to talk to my spouse. And man, you got a hot lead. And what's going to remind you to call them back to make sure that they're ready to move forward, right? You know, people, they walk out of your office and life happens. Their, their kid's sick and their husband needs something and their mom calls. And before you know it, they forgot about their consultation with your law firm and never call you back. And so you have to have some sort of process to follow up on even people that don't show up for appointments, uh, things like that. Sending appointment reminders so that people that do schedule with you actually show up. I don't think I would ever make a dentist appointment ever if I didn't get the reminder call, right? I, how many of you, you schedule an appointment six months in advance and I mean, yeah, I might put it on my calendar. Maybe I didn't, <laughs> but they call me and so I go, right? And yep. That, that kind of stuff makes a difference. So with this slide, I mean, I could see people's gears starting to you know, turn and, and thinking, well, this seems like a lot. This seems like, you know, do I need an employee for each of these things? Do I, you know, how do I get an already busy receptionist to do these things? I can, I can already hear the objections coming in. 
Yeah, so that, that's really the power of a system, right? Because if you have a system to remind you of these things, it, frankly, it makes your life easier as a lawyer. Because actually one of, one of our attorneys said this to me, that before we had a system, their life was always in chaos because they would contact leads and always be apologizing about how long it took them to call back. And they always had anxiety about who didn't I call back, right? But by having a system and a process, everything is systematic and there's things don't fall through the cracks. And when you call a client back, you're calling them in a positive light rather than a, an apologetic light. And, and so I think that it sounds like it's a lot, but, but really at the end of the day, it isn't. Because you know what needs to happen, right? The problem is you, you just can't consistently do it. I mean, you, you know in your heart that you need to call back every lead multiple times if they don't answer the phone. You know that. You know that right now. You knew that before we had this, you watched this part of this video, right? But you just, you don't have anything reminding you to do that. You know, another thing that happens is when you refer leads out to other firms, and a lot of firms do this, right? If you're a divorce uh, lawyer and you want to refer out an injury case or you're an injury lawyer and you want to refer out a divorce case, those referrals happen, but it's very ad hoc, right? You send an email and say, I'm, I talked to this person today. But imagine if you could do a direct handoff. You've already collected all the details. You have the address, you have the name, you have the situation, and you could just send that directly over to your referral partner. So when your referral partner sees your firm name, right? So they're more likely to remember your name when they have a referral the other direction. And if you refer a case out to them and they know you're keeping track of it, they're far more likely to send you back a referral fee in, in the states that that is allowed. And I'll tell you what, I've seen firms that have increased their bottom line in the hundreds of thousands of dollars range just by adding referral tracking. Um, and, and so you know, there's another huge revenue stream for your business just by doing something that frankly isn't that difficult, but you don't have any reasonable way to do that on, on sheets of paper. Right. In case you referred out six months ago to remember to call back the firm you sent it to, it just isn't going to happen. So there's a company called Velocify. And so they did a research study on three and a half million leads. And this is all industries. And so what they discovered is if you call a potential client back one time, you have a 48% chance of converting. Uh, and if you persist through six tries, that conversion rate goes up to 93%. And so there's a point of diminishing returns. I mean, you, you can see that you can go, you know, six, seven, eight, nine times and increase, you know, from 93 to 97%. But again, when I find most firms are at the one attempt, putting a process in place where you are being prompted to persist through six attempts makes a gigantic difference in the number of cases that you sign. Because again, yeah. those, those cases you're getting in web forms, web chat, that you call back once, they're, they're still very likely to be a potential client. So I have, a, I have a point on this slide. So I have a sales training university, which lies dormant on Vimeo actually. And one of the stats that I quote in the sales training course is that there's the study that I read said between the, eight, the eighth contact to the 12th contact, 80% of leads convert. Now you're talking specifically of calls. Most people never would pick up the phone six times to call. This study was done on pure contact, which includes email, social media touch points, and phone calls. Sure. So that so the stats are pretty pretty dang close to each other. The the stat I'm I'm referring to is that again, eight between that eighth and twelfth contact with a new lead, you're gonna get 80% of your conversions from that bracket of general contact. So it's powerful to see how much more powerful phone calls are in this graph. Yeah, and so you figure, so if you have the combination of up to six phone calls, and then every time you call, if you don't get an answer, they get an autom automatic email and text message, right? So now you're at 18 attempts, Yep. Um, you know, over a period of days. And so, you know, the chances are you're going to get, a, if the person has any interest whatsoever, you're going to get a response in that few day period. Yep. But just because they didn't answer initially or didn't respond to that first text doesn't mean they're not interested. I mean, they just don't have, they can't do it right this minute because they're not available at, just as you are. But, you know, yep. lawyers in, in general, they want to communicate with clients how they want to communicate. They want to talk on the phone, right? Uh, lawyers that advertise largely in email newsletters, right? But I mean, I guess it, it's, some of this is a preference. Some of it's age brackets. Um, yeah. There's, I, I, you spend a lot I, of your day in email, but most of your clients don't. They want to be on their cell phone and text you back. 
So, and this is one of the biggest points I took away from you, Eric. The biggest point that stuck, that, that really hit home with me was that most lawyers want to communicate with their leads the way the lawyer themselves wants to be communicated with. So everyone really let that sink in because that is the big insight here that could bring a couple extra six figures onto your bottom line. That's right. J just by understanding that, you know, there's younger people who will be reaching out to you. There's older people that will be reaching out to you. One thing I always say to, to my sales team is, you never know where someone's dominant communication platform is going to be. For example, there's leads I've gotten through Google ads that never respond to my emails, never respond to my calls. And here's a funny thing. Some, some people just love direct messaging on LinkedIn or Facebook. So I'll add them on LinkedIn or Facebook and I'll message them. They'll be, Hey, they'll go, Hey, why didn't you reach out to me? I'll, I'll go, I emailed you six times. Like, what? Ah, I don't check that stuff. Yeah. Let's talk. You know, you got, what's your cell? You know, so it's a perfect example of what you're saying, Eric. It's, it's really amazing. That I, I was recently interviewing for an open position. And I first 10 people I called didn't answer the phone. Now, these are people actively looking for a job and they didn't answer their phone. And so I was kind of frustrated about it. And then the next day, I just I texted all of them and I got a response from, from eight of the 10 within five minutes. Now, you know, I'm going out largely these are younger people that I was working, uh, working toward. Yep. And you know, maybe if I was interviewing people that are senior paralegals that are maybe a little older, they would have responded via phone or email and that would have been acceptable to them. So you have to yep. kind of just play. You don't know what the, what the person's, how they're going to want to communicate. So you have to try mm -hmm. all of them. So I think the, the first step is admitting that you have a problem, right? Admitting that the process that you have, whether it's sticky notes or sheets of paper or email, remembering in your email or whatever it happens to be, that if you don't have a process, you have a problem. And so I, I would say that this is really all about the process, right? You have to, you have to develop a universally reproducible process. And again, none of this is that difficult. If you determine that the right answer is when you get a lead, you're going to call them at least six times. Okay, well, now you have a rule, right? And let's put a process around that rule. And as long as the rule is clear and people would work either you or the people that work for you know what the rule is, then you can reproduce it and do it every time. And so what, what I know from, from my own firm and from experience in other firms, what doesn't work is trying to track this on sticky notes, in email, uh, in an Excel file, right? It, I mean, Excel file is certainly better than the sticky notes, but Excel isn't helping you do follow-up unless you're scanning through that Excel sheet 25 times a day, which is not reasonable. And, and the other place that I see people and firms try to manage their leads is through the case management system. And case management systems, they, you know, they generally have some sort of intake tools, but the thing is they, they're not really designed to do case intake. They're designed to manage cases, cases that you've already signed up. And so they're not going to have the automatic follow-up. They're not going to have the, you know, the reminders. It's not going to be a, a cohesive way to manage those leads. And so, you know, I see a lot of firms that they think that that's the right way. And again, I'll, I'll go back to the car dealership analogy that a car dealership has a sales team, right? And the sales team uses CRM, like I showed. And the whole time that's happening, the sales team knows who you are, but the service department doesn't, right? The service department has no idea who the leads are who are potentially going to buy a car. And at the time you purchase the car, you get a record in the service department database that tracks your warranty, your service record, your recalls, uh, maintenance. They're completely different systems and they're different people, right? So in any larger firm, you're going to have a sales team and then you're going to have paralegals that, that manage the case. And, and firms, I, I think, fail a lot by trying to conflate the two and have their paralegals do new call intake. And, so paralegals, it's a different skill set, right? They're trying to do uh, help with discovery and do document generation and uh, all these things related to managing a case. So when they get a call from a new potential client, it's hard to get them in the zone to be sales ready, right? To be on and, and empathetic because they just want to get this demand out. And so taking a new client call and signing up a new case is actually the opposite of what they want. They're just giving themselves more work. And so it's the same reason that the guy changing your oil doesn't try to sell you the car. 
And the same reason in the morning, the dentist himself isn't calling to remind you of your appointment, right? There is a separation. And so for, for a successful firm of really any scale, having dedicated person or people to do the sales process, try to convince the new leads into working yep. with your firm, that is a different skill than the person that's the paralegal managing the case. And so, so frankly, interesting. Any, go yeah, ahead. Yep. And any modern business handles it this way, right? There's a, there's a sales process and there's a client management process. Because it doesn't matter if it's uh, the guy selling sweepers, the guy selling cars, uh, or, or really anything. They're, they're different groups of people. But lawyers, law firms don't work that way. Generally, smaller law firms especially, they have uh, paralegals, which is you know, very bad. Or a lot of times it'll be the lawyer themselves, which, you know, unless you're just a, a solo law firm, that makes no sense to have a, a trained lawyer spending their time trying to convert calls to leads, which are calls to cases is a tremendous waste of time. Yeah. So in some of the points, I just want to really hit home here because you're hitting on some very important mindset shifts is owning the fact that case management is designed to manage cases, i.e. maximize case value, right? Whereas the intake process is designed to sell. Yeah, I, I said it. Oh my God. I said the word sell, right? Sell That's right. legal services, right? And everyone's so shameful about admitting, you know, that they are in a sales job. One of that, one of the modules um, uh, in, in that sales training course I was telling you about, I really got to release this to the public, um, is that everyone needs to own that they are a salesperson in some way, shape, or form. Even if you're the lowest level employee in a company, you have to sell your team members on your value and, and what you're bringing to the table. Sales is in the DNA of every person in any position in any company and people don't own that. And another point I want to make is that if you give this to someone who is, for example, a high, you know, high hourly rate lawyer, for example, or a paralegal, who'd obviously be a slightly lower hourly rate. Here's the thing. Sales is one thing. Yeah, you need to have someone who has a sales mindset handling the leads. Yeah, I get it. But here's the truth about sales. If you want to do sales right, there's some admin involved. There's some back and forth. There's, there's some time wasted with, you know, putting together a proposal, whatever, whatever it is in, in your business. There, there's a lot of admin stuff. And if you weigh down employees who are putting out demands and doing high value tasks with, you know, maximizing case value, they are going to abandon all of the admin tasks within the sales function of your law firm and abandon that extra follow-up call and abandon that extra administrative follow-up email to see if they need any edits made to the contract or whatever. So it's so important to systemize these administrative functions of sales, which can weigh down your team members who could have their time spent on higher value tasks. Absolutely. So, you know, that said, I'm just going to briefly show you how I dealt with the situation. And I think I said earlier, I looked at everything that existed. I looked at the, the Salesforce and the, all the other tools out there. But it, I just, I didn't think that our staff would be able to deal with that level of complexity. We needed something simple because, like I said, this, the whole process is not that complicated. And so anyway, what we did is we built a tool that we didn't intend to sell. We just built it for our law firm to solve this problem. And aside from being able to track all the leads that are coming in from all of your sources, right? So that could be web chats, website forms, after hours calls, direct phone calls, and put those into a process that there are rules that when we have a lead that we're chasing, we're going to call every four hours. And we're going to send them this text the first time and this text the second time. We have a lead that's scheduled. We're going to send them a text and email of the appointment information. If the appointments in the future, we'll send them a text the night before the morning of the appointment. If we assign a lead to an attorney and the attorney doesn't respond in 30 minutes, the person who took the call gets a task to check in with the attorney to find out what we're waiting on. Right? All these places that they can fall through the cracks, we built a process around it to make sure that doesn't happen. The other side of this is to understand what is working from a marketing perspective. Right? We have to understand if we're spending X dollars on pay-per-click or X dollars on billboard, what is it turning into? And so you need to understand your, the metrics of what's happening, right? How many leads are you getting? Where are they coming from? Uh, so the, where are they coming from? It, you want to be able to see 
for example, on a map, where your lead's coming from. So based on the address of the lead, and this kind of stuff can help you decide where your web targeting should be, where your billboard campaign should be. Uh, and very few law firms have any idea where the leads and calls are coming from. Right? They may have some preconceived idea that they're coming from a certain town or whatever based on purely anecdotal information. To be able to track things like how many leads have you gotten by each marketing source and how many leads are you get, have those converted into cases or the case values of those cases. And all these are really valuable bits of information that can be derived by having a system with the information to know where the lead came from, the outcome of the lead, uh, and, and what actually happened during that process. For me, the, the things that really are important that you track every lead and have a process to do it, you have salespeople to manage intake rather than having paralegals try to manage intake. You need software to manage the process and you know, lead docket is one, but there are others that, that are that do similar things. And if you have nothing, uh, implementing any of those are gonna make a difference to your business. After you have all the data, you wanna mine that data to help you make better marketing decisions because now that you've collected all this data, you can do something with it. At the end of the day, what did that do for, what did that do for me as a law firm? What did that do? So the first year we implemented this, we signed up 30% more cases on the same marketing spend. The second year, we just got better at it. And we also increased our number of signed cases by another 30%. Um, so two years in a row, 30% signed case increase within the same marketing spend. And that yeah. happened because we were terrible at intake and we didn't have a process and we were losing cases. And like I said earlier, I thought it was just us, but I've been doing this now for five years and have been in a few hundred firms. And no, or it wasn't just us. Everyone has this problem. I find almost no firm uh, that has any sort of real sales process. Oh, yeah, Beautiful. Some questions, Bill. Yes. And guys, I do want you to check out Lead Docket because this is a good solution for the problems that we went through in this video. A couple, a couple follow-up questions. You know, what we really went through in this video is the problems that are encountered. We went through, you know, how how every law firm has a leaky bucket. You know, we went through the problems of having a paralegal handle sales activities in your firm. We went through the administrative redundant side of sales follow up. I'm sure there's some some lawyers listening right now who have lost a paralegal or lost an employee that handled all of their leads and then for two or three months you have to put on the salesperson hat. If you can put yourself in those shoes, like put yourself back into the time where you were handling every lead or some people listening are still doing that. You'll have empathy for the, how many redundancies exist in sales. Like literally sometimes oh, I wish I had my sheet with me right now. I was going to show you a sheet of, cause right now I'm going through this in our company cause we just got a ton of leads from, from this event. And uh, I literally have them all written on the back of a, big long piece of paper that I spent 15 minutes organizing this morning because I didn't have time to up, upload it into our CRM, but that's really just my excuse. I really did have time. I just don't have the habit formed because I don't have a simple process behind it. So, so Eric, you know, I def, I definitely want anybody listening to, to go check out lead docket. It's lead right? Correct. Cool. And then they can get a demo of some sort. Is that Absolutely. correct? Yeah. We, we'd like to do a live demo because you really have to understand how the firm operates. And you know, generic demo district doesn't really cut it. I want to understand how the firm operates, who handles the calls, what are they doing today, and to understand how we might be able to help. Awesome, cool. So, in terms of the ideal firms you guys work with, who would be who would be good for you? Who would not be good for you? Yeah, I, I would say that it, it's going to be advertising law firms, right? So those that have either personal injury law firms, mass tort law firms, or even there's some you know criminal firms that are doing some sort of advertising. And so when you're getting that volume of leads, you know, once you start getting, I would say once you're getting more than a dozen leads a month, uh, you need a system, right? And if you're a solo and you're only getting a handful of leads a month, it probably can keep track of it. Yeah. Uh, but once you get around you know, 12 leads a month, it starts to make sense to have a process. Yep, cool. Where can people find out more about you? Just through the Lead Docket website? Absolutely, yeah, leaddocket.com is, is the best place. and then. And we can have a conversation and, and work through that. And the only thing I didn't really mention is that once the, the cases are signed up in Lead Docket anyway, 
all the information can be sent to your case management system, whether that's Clio or Practice Panther, Filevine, uh, Smart Advocate, TrialWorks, whatever it happens to be, we have integrations with most of the major vendors so that those leads can be sent directly over. And at that point, you know, rather than retyping all the information in your case management system, it's already there and you can continue to work the case. Because I, I figured there's some people would have that question about how does this get into my case management system? Right, the things right. that go there are the signed cases, right? So the cases go to case management, the leads stay in the lead system. Yeah. And I remember when we were sitting at the table in that restaurant area and you, you showed me some of this, you were telling me about how you would mark, you would be able to mark the leads by practice area type and quite, quite a few other factors so that when it transfers from lead into your case management system, you already know what type of case it is and a little yeah. bit of background info. So yeah, guys, I, I definitely think you should take advantage of getting a demo of some sort for lead docket at the least going to take away a lot from the perspective of what even is a well oiled intake system. I can tell you this, Eric has worked with enough firms to this point. I mean, he was sitting on stage, standing on stage, both of the above, you know, at this event, you know, next to some people who I know Matt Morgan, you were, you were on the same stage as him of Morgan and Morgan. And, you know, these guys are, are managing thousands of, of attorneys, actually probably under a thousand, right? He's like 750 or That's something crazy. Um, yeah. But, uh, but regardless, he's worked with all the biggest guys in the space. He's taken it He's taken all the pain points from these big firms. He's made it implementable for smaller firms and medium sized firms, but also for large firms. The, the key thing is if you're past that 12 lead per month mark, you're definitely going to get a lot out of talking to Eric about lead docket. So Eric, thank you so much for your time. You know, I'm sure people are going to watch this like 10 times like they do a lot of my videos because there's tons of gems in it. And uh, you said a lot of really powerful things. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you everyone for watching. Please subscribe to the SMB team YouTube channel to get real-time updates when we release breaking news, I'm gonna label this as like this, on the law firm intake process in 2020. Also go to smbteam.com, put your email in on our website if you wanna get put on our daily value add email drip to get free legal marketing advice sent to your inbox every day. So thank you so much for your time, energy, and attention. Stay great.